Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Virtue Evermore, continuing Cyan's route. And last time we saw a little fight between Cyan and Dahood, and thank God it was all just for show. Because if they weren't putting on a front, I was going to cry. But we're good. We're fine. That's not what's going to devastate us here. Because, like, I didn't need to be devastated in the second part. So, after a short conversation, Cyan actually escorted me outside of Cernival. Cyan's personal maid. Serving him meant that I was going to be working for this country's brain. Considering that, I really shouldn't accept his offer, which was why... Um, Cyan, why are you so against Dahut's research efforts? Wouldn't it be better to find a way for Relivers to store more emotions than before? I decided to ask him what caught my attention. Upon hearing my question, Cyan stopped. Is that a question or criticism? A question? Very well, let me answer. Cyan sat down on a nearby bench. I quietly sat down next to him. After a group of children passed by us, Cyan began to speak. To me... Emotions are bugs that hinder efficient thinking. And the emotion of love in particular is the most bothersome emotion in the world. You know, the fun part about that is we're in a Tome game and we're going to romance you and we're going to give you the most bothersome emotion in the world. You know. <sighs> a researcher only needs to perfect reason and intellectual growth. Which is why my mission is to get rid of anything in my way. As simple as that. If you have something to say, say it. W well, I've heard that leaving behind emotions changes people. So I was just surprised to hear someone say that emotions weren't necessary. You're saying it's in. Oh, you're saying it's inhumane. I'm really concerned now, though, that. Cyan found this technology, got rid of the emotions, blah, blah, blah. And that's why Sister Salome hates him so much because maybe they were in love and he was like, yeah, I don't need you or love. And that's why she has this because it hasn't got. Uh, OK, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Intense emotions aren't entirely gotten rid of because she intensely hates Cyan. So she still has that emotion. So not all the time do your intense emotions leave your body. Sometimes they stick with you. Just saying. Or she relearned, but she hates him. She hates him. So like, did she be? Did she learn to hate him in the last twenty years of her life, or was she? Did she hate him before, and that that just keeps getting recycled? So I'm just saying the whole like there are no emotions in relivers. We knew is bullshit. You know there is some. It was kind of just like, oh, intense ones. But I feel like intense ones sometimes get fucked up and cause problems, make you go haywire or just break. She still has hers, though. So, like, but I really don't want it to be like Salome was in love with fucking Cyan and then he broke her heart and he has no emotion because, like, that just feels kind of fucked up. How the fuck are we? We're cute and all, but, like, fucking Salome's hot as shit. How are we going to fucking compare with her? I don't want that. Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Or she was in love with him and he was like, yeah, I have no need for that. I just fucked you because, like, whatever. Zion would have no need for that either. He'd be like, whatever, that gets in the way of my research. <laughs> Zion is ace by default because he's like, I, I don't have time for that. I've got science to do. You are not science. So I do not have time to do you. <laughs> It's me. I'll be science. <laughs> anyway. Uh, who knows? Of course, emotions are important, and I don't think we can do without them, but I also can't dismiss your opinion on it. Cyan looked at me with a suspicion while, he, while I smiled with embarrassment. Now that I think about it, I used to be so pessimistic about life. I lived every day suppressing the emotions I felt. So who am I to talk about the importance of emotions? Hearing my words, Cyan nodded in agreement. In that sense, you were similar to me in certain inhuman ways. He was probably referring to me in the past tense because he knew that I had changed since then. Cyan slowly got ready to stand up when... 
Really? It's hard to imagine that old hag actually raised you. I, I don't see her as an old hag, but... Mother took me into her care after I was kicked out of my previous orphanage. And, well, of course, also, okay. If they were old lovers, why would he have... Why would he hate her? You know what I mean? I understand her hating him because he got rid of his emotions and, like, ruined everything and, like, whatever, but... What did... But he's like, yeah, that old hag, instead of being like, oh... Yeah, you. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like, he obviously has a little bit of spite for her, too. So his emotions aren't totally gone either, but... I don't think he intensely hates her as much as she hates him. But he doesn't intensely do anything but science. I would love to be science so he could intensely do... Do I need to be... <laughs> just anytime I say he's going to do anything... Just assume that I'm going to follow that up with me. I'm that. I would like him to do. It's just, just, especially in this part, because apparently my brain is literally six feet below the gutter. I mean, the gutter is not even as low and dirty as my brain is getting right now. I don't know. Something is wrong with me. Anyway, it's because he's looking at me. He needs to get his, I want to, I was going to say he needs to get his beautiful face off my goddamn screen, but then I'll be sad. So, so I didn't grow up with her from the beginning. And still, it's strange that his beautiful eyes look straight at me. Cyan? Is there something on my face? No. And now that I look carefully, your appearance and your manner of speech, where have I... No, it can't be. He shook his head and moved away from me. Oh my god, Cyan's not my dad, is he? Listen, I'll bone my brother, but I draw the line. He then stood from the bench. From one non-human to another. Wear this to the Institute starting tomorrow. Science shook off his lab coat. Oh my god, look, oh my god, you're wearing suspenders, you sexy son of a bitch. Look at him giving me that face. Don't give me that look. I'm gonna take off the re- I'm not even- I'm not putting this lab coat on, I'm gonna take off all my clothes. What is wrong with me? You officially work under me now. Um... I don't even need to say it! I need to leave, guys. What is he doing to me? What is happening? But I... I... It doesn't need to be said. You know. Fill it. I gotta move on before I say it. Jesus. He gently draped his lab coat like a hood over my head. I'll gladly work under him. Okay, I couldn't help it, guys. It was killing me inside. Oh, dear God. Under him, over him. Also, oh, dear Jesus. What is fucking wrong with me? No. Oh, this is basically... I feel like we're on go when we do these things, so I'm just gonna read it like on go this time. The oldest of men asked the woman with the golden silk. My hearts were so precious. Golden Silk being our hair. And he really is the oldest of men. He is the oldest man in the country. Listen. A gilf and it's okay. She sighed with disbelief and called him a fool, saying that was why he could not live on the surface. A ruthless, selfish, and arrogant god. His ignorance of human hearts made him the most pathetic saddest existence of all. She gloated and said he would never understand the gentle, comforting pain that tore at one's heart. This whole entire game is that gentle, comforting pain that tears at your heart. I don't know if it's gentle and comforting, but... Poor, poor soul. So poor was he that she cursed him to never know that feeling, even if he pleaded for it. Huh... That's interesting. Like, has Cyan actually been cursed? You know what I mean? They saw emotions and bodies as expendable. Countless shadows feared inevitable death. Or other, I don't know who other is. In the corner of the Grand Castle where the royal family of Arpisha lived... Men who had committed crimes were stepping out of their cells. 
as he walked in unison through the darkness, their wrists tied tight with a thick rope. Around them were hardy royal guard soldiers watching to ensure that none of the men did anything strange. One of them whispered, and who killed a young merchant and his younger brother to steal money and became a reliver spoke to the man next to him. Hey, do you know where they're taking us this late at night? Oh, they're doing experiments on you. Like, I'd know. The royal guard bastards haven't said a word since they took us out of our cells. The man being talked to lost a sense of guilt after he became a reliver. He kept preaching his innocence while abusing countless prostitutes. Prisoners here were those who had been accused of heinous crimes and were awaiting punishment from the royal family. Oh, another reason why emotions be not a, or a, not having emotions are a bad thing because you lose your sense of guilt and morality. Again, not everyone, but even if it's only 50%, that's scary. Even if it's only 10%, that's still scary. It's still a scary amount of people, you know? Anyone with a sliver of good in them would deny what they had done. In other words, they were true villains. Hmph. Huh. Who's Simon? Revapois? I, I, I don't know what the little accent over the E is, but I know it's not Poir. It's Poir, I'm pretty sure. But like, well, good enough, guys. They can't keep putting French in here. The young man at the end of the royal line was acting as a supervisor over the march. Hurry it up and get them going. We need to hand over these filthy criminals already. Does Simon get a fucking sprite, please? Give them to Simon Brophies and have him respond to our negotiations over the frequency of our backups. The prisoners looked at each other with confusion over what was just said. Sir! Royal Guard responded immediately. But despite their showing of loyalty to the royal family, the soldiers were surprisingly sympathetic to the criminals. Not that I agree with what the Society of Exorcists are saying, but these guys are sacrifices being sent to the demon wearing the skin of a god. Yeah, these guys are total scum, but I still feel sorry for them. Let us see how long these humans would retain their forms. Zion is basically doing human experimentation. That's some fucked up shit! But somehow not surprising, considering... You know what the thing is, is that doesn't phase me at this point, because, like, Mathis isn't even a real boy. He was literally a puppet. Like a stitched-together puppet. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Lucas was brutally murdering people, so Cyan doing human experimentation on prisoners is like, yeah, I mean, sure. Not outside the realm of expectation at this point. A few days passed after receiving Cyan's lab coat, along with a matching outfit. Oh my god, do I get a new outfit? I figured out that Cyan had an intense hatred of his routine being disturbed. Clean. Oh my god! I really do have a little new outfit! I match it! Oh my god, we're twinsies. Oh my god, these are our, we're getting married now. I mean, okay, he's, like, obviously it's because it's his lab coat, but like... And his is all haphazard, but we're actually, like, almost wearing the same fucking shirt. I mean, ours has got some frills on it, because, you know. But, like, and obviously we know how to button our shirt and tuck it in. He does not. Like, he also, I mean, it's half to untucked, but I just think it's funny that one of the buttons is just totally missed. Like, every motherfucking day. Okay, to be fair, the man probably has not changed his clothes in, like, three days. Which is a little disturbing. Take a shower and change your underwear, at least. But also, it's every time he puts on his clothes, he just always misses a fucking button. Because it's going so fast. Like. He's, like, it's like he's four years old. <laughs> like, you're like 80! Okay, never mind. It's, that's why. Listen, Grandpa! 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 Let me button your shirt for you, sweetie. Because you're getting too old. <laughs> Oh no. I'll get right on it. I'll cover I'll cover your tools on the desk with a cloth so they don't get dusty. Clothes. I had everything washed, but here are a few that are a bit more fluffed and comfortable to wear. Sorry, like him without his lab coat. You could have given him a little more booty though. You know what I'm just saying? I feel like he'd be the one with the cute little ass. Why you make his ass flat? Give me some fucking cake, okay? Give me a whole fucking bakery on this one. Food. I 
have some sandwiches for you today. I also have your night snacks ready, so please have them when you're hungry. He said three words to us. That's all I need. I'm going to sleep for 30 minutes. I'll wake you up two minutes early. Here's a pillow. After saying that he doesn't eat much, he's finally eating what I serve him without complaint. I was surprised when he wanted me to be his maid, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Yeah, you were doing exactly what he needs you to do. You two get along to the point it's creepy. You're just jealous, sweetie. I just want to poke him in his adorable cheek and be like, boop, boop, don't be mad. I'll fuck you later. <laughs> well, we'll get to romance you later. I don't know about the rest of it, but like, you know, in my head, sure. Y you think? I thought my report would ease Adolfe's worries. Instead, he looked at me with a frown. Yeah, because, um, I'm just saying. He and a certain other someone of a very similar mind. All right. Maybe. The exact mind. I don't know. But at least they're on the same page, even if not in the same brain. Of, like, God, that guy. I also feel like Adolfe is the protective one. Like, of course he is. But not in a, the obnoxious way, but he's like, seriously. Like, at least with Lucas, he was like, nah, I think Lucas can manage it, and like, whatever, but like, I, I feel like, yes, and he'd trust Eve. Mathis, I don't remember him with Mathis, he, I don't think he was very opposed to it or anything like that, but like, Cyan is a special case. Cyan is a fucking hot mess. So I understand everyone being like, are you really sure, girl? You know, so... My foster brother had come all the way out here to check on me. I tilted my head in bewilderment as I put on my resized lab coat. I guess it's because you've been isolated for so long, but... You don't realize you're doing too much for him. What are you, his nanny? Maybe I want to be his mommy. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what switch is on, but apparently all of them are, and I can't shut him down. But if I leave Cyan alone, he's probably going to get sick from living so slovenly, so... That guy's well over 60 years old. He's the oldest reliver in existence. He should be able to take care of himself. I thought he was closer to 80, to be fair. He was right that Cyan was well over 60. Perhaps over 80 years old, including his days as a human. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Like... <laughs> okay, I'll try to keep myself from doing too much. It hadn't occurred to me. That said, I was a bit surprised. I mean, girl, he's like... Like... I'm not sure where 80 falls. Is that in the greatest generation or those boomers? I think those are boomers at this point. Uh, so like... I mean, yeah! That's why he doesn't know how to do anything for himself. He was raised in a world where, like, you're gonna get married and your wife's gonna do the cooking and cleaning and making you a sandwich. Like, of course he's got a boomer mentality and he doesn't know how to do this for himself. He was always taught that a woman would do it. <laughs> I know that doesn't fly in modern society, but I'm just saying. Back in the day, when your 80-year-olds were kids, it was like, well, you get married and your wife's a stay-at-home wife, raises a kid, and she's got a martini and a blowjob waiting for you when you get home. So, like, you know. No surprise that they made Cyan, like, fit into that. It's actually kind of funny if you think about it. No, he's just fucking lazy and doesn't know how to do anything for him his goddamn self. And he will like, no, I bread's fine. Whatever, I got a drip. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's just funny, though. Ugh. Adolphe, I thought you would be against my working here like Mother is. And the only thing I don't like about the whole thing is that guy's attitude. As long as he isn't mistreating you or something, I'm fine with whatever you do. Aw. See, he's like, I want to protect you, but like, you know, I know you can handle yourself. That's the best kind of protective brother. You know? Is the one who's like, I will kick his fucking ass. But I know you got your... your but, but you just let me know if you need me to. I'm not going to just do it without your consent. You know? Of course, if Mother actually tells me why she's so cautious of him, then maybe my view will change and then I'll be pissed off like Onko. <laughs> we said we weren't going to talk about it. But from the looks of it, I doubt she'll say anything. I know, not till the end. I'm so curious. Yeah, 
I assume Mother has her reasons. Adolfe scratched his head as if troubled. In any case, just tone down what you're doing for him. You might regret getting on his good side. I absolutely might, but at the same time, I'll take whatever punishment comes my way because... Kind of trying to romance the man. I'm trying to get in his pants, so if that means that I have to become a lab rat, guinea pig, and he tortures me, but like, you know, I still get to stare at him and love him. Sure, fine, I guess. True. I mean, I don't really intend on working for him forever. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna end up working. Once Dahut returns, I'll ask if I can leave. Adolfe sighed in agreement. Cyan assumed that I had already agreed to his job offer, but... There's no telling what would happen to Cyan once Anko's power wears off. If I were to spread misfortune to him and something dire happened, that would seal the country's fate. Yeah, kind of like what happened when you fell in love with Lucas and got Cyan killed. If so, then I really needed to make sure that I quit once the opportunity arose. To be fair, if you think about it, like, Mathis is living his life. Yeah, sure, Camille's doing experiments on him, whatever. But he still gets to keep what he thinks is his personality, right? We fall in love with him, and then what happens? Camille goes bonkers, starts doing worse experiments, starts torturing him, and then dumps his own personality in him. So... You know what I'm saying? Poor Mathis no longer exists. We fall in love with... Look, Lucas is obviously going to go out. He's killing relivers, blah, 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 whatever. He's still stabbing people, but we fall in love with him, and then Capucine kidnaps Nadia, turns her into a freaking monster, basically behind the scenes. We didn't know this was happening, and blackmails Lucas into killing everyone, including Cyan. So technically us falling in love with Lucas ruined Lucas's life and killed Cyan. So, yeah. Yeah, we really are death. All the bad things are happening because we fall in love with them. Because, like, the Cyan didn't die via Lucas's hand in any other route, right? We've only done two, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We're the bad luck charm. Kind of awesome, actually. You know, it's kind of up there in the, like, where we're always, we're always the nice Susie McSunshine and the Yanderes are always, I want to be that one. I want to be the one mentally and emotionally abusing our boyfriends and they just take it. <laughs> Like, we usually take, yeah, you're dumping on me. Yeah, you're a jerk, and I just handle it. No, I want the doormat. I want to be the one stepping on the doormat. Some characters have actually liked it when we step on them. We've, we, we've seen that. You know you know if you know, okay? But, like, you know what I mean? And we've been a little bit crazy in some other games where we're like, we're a little bit of a lunatic, so, okay, that's fun. We're a little unhinged. This time, we're like, we're letting, we're ruining everybody's lives, but we're nice and sweet about it. You know? I'm just saying. So I, I kind of approve of this. It hurts me greatly. But at least it's something different than I'm the Susie Sunshine and I'm naive and I'm a little wallflower and I just whatever, okay, and I'm perfect. And like you're a Mary Sue. It's bland. This is more fun. I mean, to be fair, Cardia and Code Realize was like, I can't touch anyone or I'm going to kill them. But like, you know, so sort of the same. But that one was a little bit more fluffy, even despite the fact that we were like literally... A walking bag of poison. This one, where like I just blink at someone and they got hit by a car, so like, eh, you know, a little different. <laughs> Can't really avoid causing trauma in this one. Anyway, if so, then I really need to make sure I quit once the opportunity arose. Uh, by the way, has there been any movement in relation to the deaths? Nope, nothing in particular. I have everyone at the core checking on drugs and diseases that may have spread during that time, but honestly, it's been useless. I see. Well, I haven't heard of anything on my end either. Yeah, but I guess we can say that things are back to normal if nothing really pops up. Oh, and I also heard from Mother. You haven't been resting much ever since you started working here, right? You really should take time off or something. Come to think of it, it had been a long time since I had a day to myself. Can I really take a day off? I thought for a moment, and images of Mother and the children immediately came to mind. Okay, I'm sure Mother's worried, so I'll talk to Cyan. As long as we bring him sandwiches, he'll be fine.
After seeing Adolphe off, I went to Cyan to see if I could put in a leave request. As long as you don't take weeks off, sure. Huh? You approved my request instantly. You're like, no, how about I have every Sunday off? Why are you surprised when you asked for it? I I'm sorry, it's just that I thought everyone here worked nearly every day. So I thought you wouldn't like if I asked for a day off. The only ones pressed for time are the ones with the lives of others on their backs. In other words, the reliver researchers. Forcing you to clean up a few extra things makes no difference. On the other hand, it'll be annoying and inconvenient if you collapse from exhaustion. He didn't sound like he was worried, but I can tell he was alert to my physical condition. He didn't sound like he's worried. Yeah, but you know what, that's his version of worried. Thank you very much. I'll prepare a few days of preserved food before I leave. Uh, before that, there's one other thing. What? Seeing Cyan's brow raised, I carefully chose my next words. Well, while I'm gone, I'd appreciate it if you could cut back on working through the night. Cyan grinned. Oh, what a ladylike thing to say. Why are you telling me to stop working? I could tell he was testing me. Will you if I asked? Of course not. I let out a quiet sigh at Cyan's immediate response. Of course I didn't want him to work through the night, considering his health. But Cyan had offered his life, including eating and sleeping, for the sake of his research to advance reliver technology. Considering how much weight he put into his mission, there was no way for me to ask him to stop. So instead... Can't you ease things just a little? If you can do that, then I can make adjustments to my schedule. And I can help assist you in reducing the burden to your health. I'd be like, all I'm saying is get, like, 40 minutes of sleep instead of 30. Start there. I tried my best to reason with him. Your offer's going beyond what I want, but... I suppose you have a point. Fine. I won't promise anything, but I'll consider it. Huh? As I voiced my surprise, Cyan shooed me away with his hand. I go on. I gave approval, so get out. Rest as long as you want, but you'd better return before my room turns into a rotting heap. Th thank you! Ryan gave a nonchalant response as he saw me leave the room. Ah, oh, Speezy! Welcome back, my dear child! Upon my return, Mother gave me a big hug and looked at me worriedly. Are you alright? Did that bastard do anything to you? I'm fine, Mother. Cyan's been treating me very well. My cheeks warmed at her treating me like a child. I was just happy to have some time to spend with her now. Still, I was a bit concerned by Mother's reaction. In fact, seeing Mother so worried about me was making me worried too. Okay, so here's the thing that popped into my head like five minutes ago. Um, or ten minutes ago, it really depends. Uh, it was kind of noodling in the back of my mind, and then it kind of popped forward, and then we were reading. So, uh, the last part, I think it was the last part, when Cyan was, like, looking at us, like, where have I heard those mannerisms before? Anyway, you know what I mean? He was like, you look and sound, and then, like, he let it go. Like, he's obviously seen someone that's reminiscent of us. Obviously could be, like, our mother or something, because he's he's 80. He's met a lot of people, Right. And then I was like, oh my god, it's not mom, is it? Oh my god, he's not our dad. No, okay, but here's the thing. Then I was talking about, like, okay, math is not being a real boy, Jean made it, blah, blah. And then I went, Jean, or, sorry, Camille's girlfriend, right? The woman he was in love with. Oh, she has blonde hair like me, and that was the whole stint in Mathis' route when he basically put himself into Mathis that then the Camille inside of Mathis thought we were Rosalie or whatever. What if she was our fucking mom? Does that make Jean her dad? That's... She was a prostitute. Wasn't she? Was she? Yes, because she knew other women that were prostitutes. She could have had a baby. We could be... Right, because didn't one of the other prostitutes that met... Oh. Oh, God, no, wasn't she killed and then her baby was killed? What if it was me and I was... I was, oh my god! Because I was just like, like, Cyan recognized us, and the only other time anyone's ever mentioned anything about the exact same color hair that we have, like, we're so unique with our blonde hair, right, was Rosalie. 
And then I was like, well, maybe it doesn't mean that that uh, Camille's our father, because that would be fucked up. He's also not a reliver, though, so it couldn't have been. Well, no, never mind. That wouldn't work because she would have died not too long ago. And remember, Mathis is only like however many years he created him. He created him, so he's not that old. Jean's probably closing in on his late 20s. He's not a reliver, so we're actually 18. Okay, that wouldn't fit. Never mind. They weren't relivers. Well, are we sure? Are we sure she wasn't? Because I was thinking, like, she could have had, even if it wasn't, she could have had a baby with someone else, because if she was a prostitute, like, eh, birth control fails, and we don't know about the birth control in this fucking world. Okay? They don't even know what a puzzle is, for fuck's sake. I'm not sure they know what condoms are. Listen! There's a line of believability, and the not knowing what a puzzle is is still baffling me, and will just haunt me on my deathbed, okay? How do they not know what a puzzle was? And everyone's gonna be like, what's wrong with this old bitch? You know? I'm not having kids, so I'm never going to have grandkids. And I'm going to be like, Grandma's crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Great on Spacey is nuts. As I'm, like, ranting about puzzles. Um, yeah, so that won't fly. Never mind. But Rosalie could have been our sister or something. I don't know. She's the only person that's ever come up in the, oh, you have the same hair color type of a thing. So, And we don't know who our parents are. So I feel like there's something that's going to come up with that somewhere somehow anyway i that was noodling in the back of my brain what if rosalie was our mother oh my god and then i when i actually when i said it out loud i was like no okay never mind that doesn't really track okay it doesn't track in the logic of the game and the timeline that we know of at the moment but it doesn't mean that it's not going to come back and be like actually see she had a kid and then she was a reliver but actually you're her but like in another time or like something fucking weird like that but i'm just saying She's the only person that had the same hair color, so. But it seems like Cyan might have met someone that was related to us at some point because we have the same look and mannerisms or something. You know what I mean? I feel like that's going to come back. Anyway, in fact, seeing Mother so worried about me was making me worried, too. It made me wonder why she felt it to this extent. Kind of tell us. But well, we're only in Chapter 2 now. We've already gotten to Chapter 2 of his route. Well, fuck, that went fast. As I gently pried myself from her arms, I looked at Mother and asked, Um, Mother, why are you so worried about my working for Cyan? I mean, I know Cyan isn't the most likable person and has his share of enemies, but he just doesn't seem as bad as you make him out to be. In fact, he's been paying me well and letting me take time off without complaint. Uh, I assumed that her concern came from their unfriendly relationship. I'm so sorry. My emotions got the better of me, and I didn't really listen to what you wanted to tell me. Mother's shoulders slumped. You, more than anyone, have suffered the unjustified slander of others. I know you won't make your decision about a person based on what I have to say about them. Ah, uh, to think he told me that I was only saying what I wanted. Oh, without consideration to others. I suppose I'm still learning to be a mother. Sorry, Mother. Of course I trust what you have to say. <laughs> it's all right. I'm very happy you became such a kind and loving child. I breathed a sigh of relief, seeing Mother back to her smiling self. Still, it is true that I do not want you to go near Cyan. Mother spoke boldly, with no apparent intention of changing her opinion of him. If I were to categorize that man as good or evil, he would definitely be evil. It's only at the moment that he has no reason to do anything evil. No reason? He has. Once he has a reason, he'll commit atrocities without a second thought to anyone else. Even things that I would never dare utter in my own voice. I mean, that's not untrue, and he's kind of doing those atrocities to those prisoners, technically. You just don't know about it. She didn't go into detail about what those atrocities might be, but... And again, honestly, nothing... I say nothing could surprise me. I'm waiting for this game to dole it out and be like, hold on, hold on, wait for it. Because, like, look at Lucas. I mean, that was pretty horrific. So I'm just saying, at the moment, I feel like I'm used to it. 
So I can't wait to see what this game's going to unleash on me to be like, wait, bitch. Her cold eyes, yet shaking voice, made it seem as though she personally witnessed him in the act. Her words were strangely convincing. May I ask what he's done in the past? Mother's silence seemed to be her way of refusing. That bad. So if he's still evil, why are you exchanging letters with him? It's because we're both using each other for our own, pur for our own purposes. I know this sounds terrible, but... And there's no friendship or emotion involved in our interactions. And then again, I know you won't just agree with what I'm telling you now. Sorry. You're much more cheerful now, but you still have a habit of over-apologizing. You aren't apologizing to Cyan, are you? Now that you mention it, not sure. <laughs> well, I suggest you keep that in mind so that he doesn't take even more advantage of you. Which meant... You're not going to stop me from working with Cyan anymore? I doubt you can refuse him anyway. If I try forcing you away from him, it'll only make matters worse. Still, promise me you won't ever forget my warning. If for, oh, if for some reason he takes an interest in you as death, you must leave everything behind and go into hiding right away, understood? Yes, okay, see, the fact that now you're saying that, which is the warning that Anko gave us, and I feel like that would also then, because it, it, you know what I mean? What did I say when Anko was like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you seem to hate him as much as mom does. And like, that seems like a very Adolfe thing that would happen. Like he would trust our mom. Or, so I'm just, I'm just saying that's a little sus, but okay. But also Anko knows all the shit that's going on and going down. So like, not totally far-fetched, but it's also like, there's a weird parallel. And so it's like, doing weird things in my brain that I'm like, huh, huh, huh. Are you a clone, sir? Look, Lucas has like six clones out there. Two that we know of. One killed another one. And then that one took over and he was like, yeah, that other person, that body double. And was like, no, I think it was really a clone of you. They didn't unmask it to prove it, but I still feel like that's what we were supposed to think. And that's what I'm thinking. So I was happy that I was finally able to talk to mother and get to her about what I had been doing, but why would she tell me to go into hiding? Because he's going to use me as a research subject. Listen, I'm okay with it. I returned to my room and sat on the bed. Mother's stern words still echoed in my mind. I wonder what kind of bad things he did. Me too. Maybe performing autopsies like before? Or maybe he treats the commoners badly like the royal family and the royal guard. No, he's doing scientific experiments on people. Kind of like Capucine, probably. But, like, without the gleeful, malevolent evil. Because that's an emotion, and Cyan doesn't have those. So, slightly more horrifying. Or is it something worse? Anko's pressing words came to mind. I continued to be plagued by doubts, and my suspicion toward him grew. My suspicion grew, and also my lady boner. <laughs> of course, not to the extent that I was concerned for my immediate safety. Then again, I wasn't quite sure how I should approach him the next time I saw him. Um, with a kiss. For no real reason, I hugged the lab coat that Cyan gave to me that day. The lab coat was too large for me to wear, so I tailored it to fit me. It's so like Cyan to give me something within his reach instead of going to the trouble of ordering a new one. Still, I didn't really mind what he did. He'd saved countless people in this country from the invisible threat of the curse. Cyan also looked at what I did and evaluated me without any bias. He also gave you his lab coat and he was wearing it on his body and now you're wearing it on your body and it's like you're wearing him. <laughs> that sounds a little disturbing. The game's disturbing, so... If Cyan were here in front of me, he'd probably just tell me that he only gave me his honest evaluation, but I don't want to replace my gratitude toward him with suspicion. It's that this naivety that's going to make us fall in love with him, and then we're probably going to be tortured for it, but we're going to be tortured, and we're going to fucking enjoy it. Unable to come to terms with my own feelings. Yeah, well, I don't think what you told me is wrong at all. A few days later, oh, there's a little... Hey, here's the thing. You cannot have a dark, evil side to you. You are precious. I believe Adolfe would have a dark side just because, like, he's a little angsty. You know what I mean? So, like, 
I don't think his dark side would be stabby, but he'd be like overprotective kind of whatever. But like, I just cannot, just cannot think of this little buttercup as having a dark side. To be fair, I'm sure people thought that way about freaking Lucas. Like, look at this sweet, innocent little thing. But, you know, again, that would be only if you didn't notice the correlation between Boros sprites having the same poses as Lucas and go, oh, Lucas is a stabby motherfucker. But if you started the game and you didn't notice that, you would have been like, oh, Lucas is so sweet and gentle. Oh, he's nice and precious. And you wouldn't have thought he's a stabby psycho underneath. So, like, that's me right now being bamboozled by even being like, look, he's so sweet and gentle. He's a sweet little buttercup. And he's, where, what, what darkness are you hiding? To be fair, Mathis wasn't really hiding darkness. It was Camille that was hiding the darkness. And the darkness inside Mathis was not really his own doing. It was kind of forced into him with all the brain downloads he was getting. So, eh. And his darkness was really just like obsession with murdering Boro. So like, you know, eh, can't really blame him for that. So Eve could absolutely just be a total buttercup that's just going to get shit on by the game. So, With my leave over, I headed to the Institute when I met Eve along the way. He listened to my concern and responded to me with a nod and words of support. But I also know that it's not good for me to disregard Mother's and Adolfe's concerns. Eve, what I just told you, what do you think about Cyan? Hmm, I don't really know Cyan personally, so there's not much I can say. Except that you can save yourself some grief by not overthinking it. Huh? I mean, we're talking Cyan here. He'll tell you himself that he's not a good guy. So I don't think you need to wonder too much about whether he's good or bad. I mean, he's already given us the answer, you know? He chuckled at my surprise. Even if Cyan was doing something to feel guilty about, I'm sure he'd do it with pride, totally unrepentant. I was taken aback by Eve's opinion. I mean, he's not wrong, but he's just so chill about it. He's like, yeah, even if he's being, like, evil, he's, he's fine with it, so what ifs? Come now, even Cyan would never do such a thing. I mean, I guess I could imagine him doing that. I mean, uh, girl. Like, if, if you went, what if you thought, what if Lucas were stabbing people? She'd be like, what? Lucas? Delicate little Lucas stabbing people? Nah, so I don't trust her judgment necessarily. <laughs> All right. I chuckled at his joking tone. There was another way of looking at things. Just as Eve said, I might not fully trust Cyan now, but I was getting to know him better than before. Of course, if you see Cyan committing heinous crimes, well, that's a different story. But there's nothing to prove it now, so trying to smoke out his bad side will only put you in harm's way. But for now, I think it's best to just assume that there's a side to Cyan you don't know about, and call it a day. A side I don't know. Eve's advice sank into my heart. If I listened to him, I'd also be following Mother's advice as well. Thinking about it further, I don't know Cyan well enough to defend or denounce him. Thank you very much, Eve. I feel a lot better now. I think I can get back to working for Cyan again. He has our little buttercup on the cheek as we pat his head and then run off to our sexy little boyfriend over here. Eve smiled brightly in response. To show him my thanks, I gave him a few of the sandwiches I prepared for the day. He's like, shit, all I have to do is give you dumb advice? And I get sandwiches? You just made his little, uh, day. With a slightly lighter basket of sandwiches in hand, I walked to the Institute in Cernival. I showed my pass to the guards and nodded as I went through the familiar gate. I opened the door to Cyan's room, expecting the place to be in utter shambles after my two-day absence. What I found was even worse. What I saw didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> the way they phrase that is like, I expected to see it in shambles. I'm like, there is no way the game's going to be like, but surprisingly, it wasn't. You know it was either going to be, yep, it's exactly what I expected, or it was worse. So, <laughs> Still, it wasn't as dusty or as littered with crumbs as before. The room somehow maintained some semblance of being a laboratory. Um... The fact that the door was unlocked meant the owner of the room was inside. Zion? I called out quietly in case he was in the middle of something. Sleeping? Do we get a CG? 
Instead of a reply, I heard an unearthly sound coming from the floor. Oh my god, we do get a CG. Is- oh my god. Is he grinning? Look at his little happy face. Is he doing the puzzle? Is he doing the puzzle? I can't tell. It looks like he's doing the puzzle. It looks like the puzzle's in front of him. Seriously? You have a rumpled shirt and the other one we saw a little bit of skin, but we don't get a little bit of hip here? Look, there's a little bit of cake in this, though. He's got a little bit of an ass. All right, thank you. You can't make him totally... Like, listen, I'm just saying! Women like a little junk in the trunk on their men, okay? I want some booty on my boys. <laughs> hmm. No matter how many pieces are the same color, I can solve it so long as I have the borders done. You know what's funny about this science? Like, I'm a fucking genius. Because all I have to do is put the border pieces together, and then I can easily do this puzzle. And it's like, yeah, you and every fucking other person in the normal fucking world, that's how people do puzzles. A sociopath does the puzzles without doing the border first. But, like, most people do the border, and then you do the rest, and, like... But he's over here thinking he's a fucking rocket scientist for this. I'm gonna need you to pop over into the real world for a second, motherfucker. And I'm gonna be like, everybody here knows what puzzles are. So, you're not that smart. <laughs> I, but I'm just, I love the fact that he's laying on the floor doing a puzzle. It's cute, though. <laughs> it was a raspy sort of laughter. I looked cautiously and saw Cyan picking up pieces of something from the floor. He was connecting the pieces one by one, matching up the curved edges. What is this? My curiosity couldn't be contained. I just, I love the whole thing about the puzzle. It's just baffling to me. I held my breath. With each piece Cyan connected, a large picture of vibrant colors began to take shape before my eyes. What is that? Can it be made into any image? No. You must be creating a picture using those colored pieces. I stared, mesmerized by the sight, when... Oh yeah, I didn't even realize the puzzle piece in his hand. I didn't even see that. I was like, is he doing the puzzle on the floor? But you could see the puzzle, but you could see the little piece in his fingers. Hmm? Ah, it's you. I thought that old bag was going to put up a fight, but I see you were able to return. Cyan, who had been focused on his activity, turned to address me. I love the fact that he is just playing with a puzzle. It's adorable. Um, yes. Thank you very much for allowing me to take some time off. But, Cyan... What is it you're doing there? Cyan didn't dismiss my curious question. It's a jigsaw puzzle. A jigsaw? They'd never heard of it before. It's a recreational hobby from the outside world. A picture is separated into pieces so that they can be reassembled. It was originally discovered through one of the books that the Claude family translated. I had a craftsman create a puzzle based on the description, and I've been playing with it when I need a break. Which meant... So this is a hobby of yours? It's about the only hobby I have outside of work. I love how adorable he's like, I play with it when I need a break. Like... He's over here, like, playing with puzzles. Like, there is something... Like, okay, this world doesn't know what a puzzle is. He finds it fascinating and he's doing it. And, like, I'm not gonna say, like... Because puzzles are not, like, oh, juvenile or whatever. Because, like... Everybody, like, not everybody, but I mean, like, every age of people, there are people that do puzzles. I have puzzles. My mom does puzzles. They're fun. It's something to, like, think about and do. But, like, it's, like, no different in a way than playing a board game. You know, you're playing a board game, but you usually have to play those with other people. Or you're playing solitaire or something. You're playing a game, and a puzzle is, like, a game that you're doing by yourself, you know? But it's just kind of adorable that Cyan, of all people, is like, I'm playing with a puzzle. Like, he's got the pieces, and he's like, Dee -dee no matter how many times he does it, he just finds this little odd hobby joy in playing with a puzzle. There is something about that that, like, you saw your grandpa doing a puzzle, you're like, okay, grandpa's doing a puzzle. Fine. No big deal. You see Cyan doing a puzzle, and it's somehow like, why does that just get my heart? Oh, it's so adorable. Because puzzles are weird in this world, and Cyan is a robot. So a robot learning how to do a puzzle and just finding joy in it is kind of fucking cute. It'd be like him sitting over here dressing up a Barbie doll, and you're like, don't know why this is cute. But it's fucking cute, and I love that they gave him this hobby. Okay, I just, I don't know. Because it's so just not fitting of his personality, which makes it so much more fun. 
I was, it was surprising to hear. I can't believe this exists. The inventors were amazing. I can't believe this exists. The inventors were amazing. I feel like the inventors were amazing because, like, I can't believe this exists. Okay, sure. True. But he is a scientist, so giving praise to an inventor or a scientist would be almost stroking his ego. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, stroking his ego. Listen, I got that first one, like, ask mother's opinion wrong, but I've been doing good ever since. It's amazing. It's like magic. So the people who live outside of this country not only live a long time, but they also have the freedom to think of such a wonderful form of entertainment. Does that mean we could create something like this if we had the same kind of lifespan as those outside? I doubt the long I doubt the longevity has much to do with their creativity, but and the influence of longevity must have something to do with it. I admit your thought process is very interesting. Well, the longer you live, the more time you have to get bored and think of new things to keep yourself entertained. But I'm pretty sure puzzles existed long before people lived to be like 80. I'm pretty sure puzzles have existed for a long time. You know, so people were like, <coughs> I'm 12, I'm dying, and you were doing puzzles. You know what I'm saying? So puzzles are like pretty old, so. My longing gaze lingered on the unfinished puzzle. Um, Cyan? I promise I won't get in your way, so would you mind if I stayed next to you and watched you complete that puzzle? I'm going to kick you out the moment you break or lose any pieces. Taking that as permission, I knelt by his side to see the completion of the image he was putting together. I love the fact that we got a CG of Cyan doing a puzzle. I don't know why I love it. I stared at Cyan's hand as he put together the pieces one by one. Each time he found the right piece... <laughs> I like how he just giggles to him. I'm like, hey, I bested you, puzzle. I knew that piece went there. You've done the puzzle like 7,000 times. <laughs> it scared me a little when Cyan laughed eerily all by himself. <laughs> I kind of find it adorable. I'm really wondering how the voice actor was like laughing, you know? But I was more curious to see what kind of picture would result from his work. But the pieces I kept finding scattered across the room were puzzle pieces. I mumbled quietly to not break his focus. Then I didn't throw away those beautiful pieces of art. Well, that's the very reason why I brought you on board as a maid. Ian responded nonchalantly as he kept his eyes on the puzzle. Huh? What do you mean? Surprised, I looked up and fixed my eyes on Cyan's face. Cyan also stopped with a piece in hand. It's exactly as I said. And to those who don't know what a jigsaw puzzle is, the pieces must look like trash. In fact, Dalit and a few others have thrown them away, assuming the same. I, I see. So the personal belongings that science spoke about before were these pieces. But you're different. You found them, and instead of assuming they were useless, you kept them aside in one place. You even dusted them off. Cyan turned over one of the shiny black puzzle pieces between his fingers. I found out you secured them after you left that day. That, along with your actions from the time we lived together, made me realize... You don't have the courage to intrude on other people's domains. I hate people who stand up for themselves, so your personality is convenient to me. I'm a doormat! Well, you know what, in this context, I'll take it. He went on to say that... That was the reason he used his position to make me work for him. Science said it matter-of-factly, without any sign of guilt. Like, I mean, you basically called me a doormat. You're like, you don't stand up for yourself, which is awesome. I like it. Yeah, you're right, I don't. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> it was exactly as Eve said he was. I couldn't help but smile at the unexpected reason for my employment. Cyan raised his brow, probably not expecting my reaction. Yeah, he's like, I've told people they were doormats before, and they usually get mad. What the hell? What are you smiling about? I I'm sorry, it's just... A lot of people have complimented me for how well I've cleaned, but... Most of them never notice the details, or if they do, they don't mention them. So your feedback made me happy. He's like, I also said you were a doormat. And you're like, I'm just happy you noticed I dusted the puzzle pieces. That's all. Like, <laughs> Uh, I knew it. 
The reason I didn't throw the pieces away was that I was afraid of being scolded for discarding things without your permission. So I'm glad my cowardice helped you in some way. He won't even take the bait. I mean, it's good that you don't do anything unnecessary. So don't let me down now. Right, I'll do my best. My cheeks warmed with joy. Am I crazy to be pleased that he called me convenient? I mean, no, because I'm thinking I'm also here conveniently if you need to fuck me on your desk. Like, I am conveniently here for that convenience for you. Not everyone. I'm not easy for everyone. But for you, I'm absolutely a doormat. Walk all over me. Do whatever. Literally. Almost anything. <laughs> listen. Listen. Seeing my reaction. Hey, your hand. Open up your hand. Huh? L like this? I revealed my palm to Cyan. I barely caught it. One of the pieces Cyan was holding fell into the palm of my hand. Oh my god, he's inviting us to do the puzzle with him! It's like we're getting married. If you're that interested, go ahead and try putting a piece in. Huh? Uh, are you sure? I'm sure, which is why I gave you that piece. Th thank you very much! I've wanted to give it a try ever since I first saw you working on it. You're like a child with a toy. Well, I mean, a puzzle is kind of like a toy. For all ages, like Legos, they're kind of toys. It's okay to... I'm just, yeah, so were you. You're like a child with a toy. You're not over there? <laughs> I got a piece. <laughs> Cackling with your little boy laughter over here every time you get a piece. But I... Sir! This is a pot calling the kettle black. I carefully held the piece between my fingers and followed Cyan's example from before. I looked over the entire puzzle. Over here? No, and don't force the piece in. Look at the color and design. Color and design? They all look the same. You've got to be kidding me. I'll tell you the general area to look, so figure out where it goes from there. Okay, I'll do my best. I love that we are playing with puzzles with fucking Cyan. This is like the greatest thing ever. I couldn't forget the soft click from placing the piece into the right place. From what I heard, this particular puzzle was made up of 3,000 pieces. Damn. Cyan wouldn't be able to complete it within a day, even with his talent. So we wrapped up the day by leaving that puzzle in place, secured on one of the small shelves in the room. I'm glad I listened to Eve and didn't try to assume he was a bad person. He can't be all bad if he plays with puzzles! I feel a little closer to him than before. Come to think of it, that was the first conversation I had with him that wasn't about work. It was also the first time Cyan actually praised me directly. <laughs> now we're giggling. Because he praised me like he giggles when he gets a puzzle piece. I wondered where that piece would appear in the final picture. As I imagine the results of the puzzle... Oh, Miss Spacey. Oh, Stabby McStabberson. You're still beautiful and I still love you. You put me in a cage, so that just amped your points up a lot. Uh, Lucas, are you on your way back? Yes, I finished a lesson at the orphanage in the northern part of the district. A lesson? That reminds me of what Mother told me. I heard you've been leaving the orphanage a little earlier than usual. We usually spend time chatting with Mother afterward. I do miss our little friend Nadia. I do miss her, but... Have you been very busy? Lucas nodded with a troubled expression. I had refrained from conducting lessons until the Borough case was resolved. That means the curriculum has been delayed, so I've been going to multiple locations each day to catch up. You sound very busy, but I'm sure the children must be very happy to see you so often. <laughs> I do hope that's the case. By the way, I haven't seen you at the orphanage recently. Oh, I'm actually working outside the orphanage now, so I haven't been around much. I see. Do worry me a bit, but I should be happy to hear you're willing to step outside more often. He's all like, oh, it's your stepping outside, and I bet I miss you because I've been in love with you since the moment I saw you. He's, okay, we have our childhood brother, our stepbrother, who's a little overprotective. Normally the overprotective childhood friend, but he's the 
Adolphe is perfectly fine in his overprotection. But he definitely has the, he's got the little part of the childhood friend that's overprotective. That would be him. Eve is the one that actually, like, rescued us as a childhood friend, sort of. So he's probably going to be, like, you know, that, like, but I've known you since we were kids and I've kind of always been in love with you. But then also Lucas is the one that's also been in love with us since the first time he saw us. So, like, there's a lot. There's a lot of people insta-loving us. I'm okay with it. I'm just saying. And Anko might share brain cells with Adolphe, so, like, there's that. Uh, you know. So, so we really have not had to try very hard to make these boys love us, really. Cyan is going to be the hardest one. You know. Mathis was pretty easy, because he was a sheltered little shut-in, so we were nice to him, pat him on the head, and then he was like, wait, I love you. Okay, you know. He was fairly normal for being a... Not a real boy. Zion's going to be the complicated one, but everybody else already loves us, so that's awesome. <laughs> Lucas probably had no intention of asking who I was working for, evident by his gentle smile. Personally speaking, there was no reason for me to keep the information hidden. He was as concerned as Mother was when it came to his students. I really didn't want to burden him more than he already was. So I decided to keep things simple unless he asked me directly. I would too, because now what we know about him... Cyan, the reliver thing. Yeah, I don't think he'd like that. Not because he doesn't like Cyan. That would also, that would be fair, but it's the whole, you're working for a reliver. Like that. And we know that Lucas is in love with us. We know that Lucas likes stabbing relivers. I'm just saying. Cause problems. But, uh, that's right. I recall that you've delivered Sister Salome's letters to Cernival on occasion. I suggest you avoid that district unless there's good reason for you to go. He looked in the direction of my workplace, the Institute. I've had, I have, uh, I have heard through rumors. A number of victims from the mysterious suicides and murders by Boro have been identified. Their families are very upset that the Royal Guard didn't fulfill their duties, so they're planning on holding a protest soon. It seems that this protest will be against the Royal Family, so perhaps things may get out of hand. Protest? Something like what the Society of Exorcists does? But perhaps a bit tamer in scale. After all, we're very much aware of the consequences of openly, openly voicing dissent against the royal family. So this one should be somewhat smaller in comparison. I nodded in acknowledgement. The royal guard's base was located near the institute and the castle. In other words, the researchers who aren't protesting might get caught up just by being within striking distance. Indeed, I live close enough to the district where it borders Cheetahs, so it's no laughing matter to me. In any case, I don't think it'll be that bad, but I wanted to let you know for your own safety, just in case. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. We're going to be at the Institute when the protest happens, and then we're going to have to spend the night with Zion. Hell yeah, that's how we stay at our boyfriend's house overnight! Mom, I'm so sorry, I can't come home. There's a protest. Like, I don't know if it'd be safe for me to walk through the streets, and Adolfe's busy, so like, like I'm going to have to spend the night with my boyfriend. I mean, we're not going to have sex or anything, I swear. <laughs> oh, I'm not sorry. Anyway, I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Please be careful. And that's where we're going to end it. And maybe, maybe we won't be inappropriate next time. Maybe we won't be inappropriate. Give me a fucking break. You come here for this shit, don't you? There is at some points where I'm tame in comparison to whatever the fuck happened today. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.